Okay, this is a little bit video on how to make a box violin. You're going to use the box violins primarily in group, but sometimes also in your private lesson, depending on your teacher's specific agenda. Um, one of the primary points of the box violin is to um, have a way for the uh, teacher to do some basic um, position and in holding the violin activities without a real violin. Um, just because of the delicate nature of a violin. Also in group class, when you have a lot of kids, if you can't always be there to help each one, you don't want the violin falling all over the place, um, etc. Um, some teachers use it as an incentive um, in the beginning, um, you know, meaning if the child does a great job with the posture on the box violin, then they, you know, get, they earn the right to the regular violin. Sort of just depends on your own private teacher. But, um, the biggest thing when you make a box violin is to try to make it as close to the same size as your child's actual violin. So a box violin that's much smaller or much bigger than the regular violin is not going to be helpful to some of the basic positioning exercises. This is actually my daughter's violin, but she's eight years old, so it's bigger than um, most of the beginner, beginner violins. Um, this was her box violin when she was little. I used... Um, this is actually a, jewel, a jewelry box, um, but you want it to be sort of about the same height as the violin body. I mean, obviously this is like less than half the height of this violin, um, but you'd want it to be about the same height and then about the, close to the same width as the widest part of the violin um, and, and even the same depth as the violin. So um, things to use a lot of times, a macaroni and cheese box, for a small violin might be the right about the right size as the violin, obviously without the macaroni on the inside. Um, or something, if your child's violin is smaller, maybe you can find a little bit smaller box. Both, both of these boxes are probably about the width of a small violin. Like I said, I found um, this was a little like jewelry box, I think. Um, then you want to um, just cover it up. I just basically wrapped it in a piece of paper. Um, sometimes uh, people wrap it in that brown paper that you use for packing. It doesn't really matter. Um, that that's how, what it looks like is inconsequential to the function of it. But sometimes, you know, making it look fun for your child's particular interest might make them more interested in the box violin. And then the neck part um, just needs to be about the same length as the neck and scroll of their violin. Again, obviously this one's much shorter because. This is the small violin I have in my house at this moment, but you'd want it to be about the same size. In this case, I used a paint stick that you can get for free from Home Depot. Um, a ruler sometimes works. A wooden rule would be better. I just happen to have this one um, sitting around or just whatever you could find that um, even a piece of cardboard just cut and then taped on there. I just taped it on there and I just drew this little smiley face to kind of look like a violin. Um, but you could... Um, you know, draw whatever. I had some parents get really elaborate and make it look like a real violin, and um, but just the size, and you just don't want to make it heavier than the, um, you know, much heavier than the actual violin. You will, when doing these positioning exercises, need to use the same shoulder sponge that your child uses in the lesson with the violin. So again, you know, just wait until your child has um, told you about that. Um, but you would attach it the same way as you would on the violin, just with a rubber band, and it would go in a position like that.